a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each must do as already determined, without sadness or compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Moreover, God is able to make every grace abundant for you, so that in all things, always having all you need, you may have an abundance for every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. The one who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed and increase the harvest of your righteousness. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm is, blessed the man who is gracious and lends to those in need. Who's gracious and lends to those in need. Blessed the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commands. His posterity shall be mighty upon the earth. The upright generation shall be blessed. Blessed the man who is gracious and lends to those in need. Well for the man who is gracious and lends, who conducts his affairs with justice. He shall never be moved. The just one shall be in everlasting remembrance. Blessed the man who is gracious and lends to those in need. An evil report he shall not fear. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. His heart is steadfast, he shall not fear till he looks down upon his foes. Blessed the man who is gracious and lends to those in need. Lavishly he gives to the poor. His generosity shall endure forever. His horn shall be exalted in glory. Blessed the man who is gracious and lends to those in need. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me will follow me. And where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. The Gospel of the Lord. So today is the feast of St. Lawrence, deacon and martyr of the third century church. He was the right-hand man, so to speak, of Pope Sixtus II at the time. His job, Dick Lawrence's job, was to go into Rome and take care of financially with food and other ways and medicines, the poor, the sick, and the disadvantaged. That is what his job was and he was very close to the Pope, and the Pope wanted him to do this work diligently. Well, Pope Sixtus was martyred for the faith. Six days later, or well, a few days later, Lawrence was called before the Roman officials who thought that the Church of Rome was very wealthy. And so they demanded from, from Deacon Lawrence all the treasure of the Church of Rome. He sent him out and said, bring it all back to us, the Roman officials. So he comes back with the treasure of Rome. He brings before them the poor, the sick, the disadvantaged. And he said, this is the treasure of the church of Rome. And for that, 
He was also martyred. This is six days now after Sixtus was martyred. He was martyred for the faith and like I said, in a very gruesome, gruesome way. One of the first earliest churches built in Rome was to honor not Sixtus, but Deacon Lawrence. And that church is still there in Rome. In our first reading today, Paul's writing to the Corinthians and telling them, there's a lot of poor people in Jerusalem who need your help. Please give alms so I could take them to the people of Jerusalem who are in need. And he said, because God loves a cheerful giver. I do love that line that Paul wrote, God loves a cheerful giver. Deacon Lawrence gave his life for the poor. Paul asked the Corinthians to give what they could for the poor in Jerusalem, and they did. So the question for all of us today is to, to what is our attitude, our own personal attitude to those who are in need in any way, shape, or form? Do I have, feel like I have, am I really representing Christ, Jesus, to people who are in need, just like we're called to do it, just like Jesus did it? What am I doing personally in order to help the poor in this area or in the world somehow, in some way, shape, or form? And hopefully we are doing that in a personal way. And if we are, the question would be also, am I doing it in a cheerful way? Not grudgingly, but happily. Because everything we have, everything we have is a gift from God. All of it belongs to him. What part of what he gives us are we happily sharing with others who don't have what we have?